everyone, it's Ashley, and thank you for coming to Crafts with Ash. Today, I'm gonna show you some awesome and spooky light up Halloween DIYs. All of these DIYs are using mostly supplies from the Dollar Tree with a couple sprinkled in there from Hobby Lobby. So without further ado, let's get started. <laughs> So to do this first craft, you're going to need two of these beware signs from the Dollar Tree. <laughs> then you're going to need a pack of light up LED lights, this pack of metal words from the Dollar Tree, this wooden cutout of a haunted house, some scrapbook paper, I got mine from Hobby Lobby, and then you could use your Cricut or some vinyl letters. Mine also came from Hobby Lobby. Then you're gonna need some Jenga blocks and the jumbo popsicle sticks. First, by using the two smaller signs from the Dollar Tree, I wanted to create a big sign. So I cut the ribbon and the tags off and then I flipped them over so that the beware was facing up. Then by using some duct tape, I went ahead and I duct taped them together just by just putting a strip of it right down the center. Then I took those jumbo, jumbo craft sticks that I did get from Walmart and I hot glued five of them going all the way down the center. Next, I flipped the sign over and gave the sign a nice coat of black acrylic paint. After that, I put that to the side to let it dry. Then I grabbed my cutout of the haunted house and my scrapbook paper, and I traced the haunted house onto the scrapbook paper and then cut it out. Then by using my Mod Podge, I decoupage the scrapbook paper onto the haunted house cutout. Now you wanna make sure to put a nice thin layer on top and make sure to get every inch of that surface, especially paying attention to the edges too because you don't want the edges to flap up. Next, I took my sanding block and to make sure that I had nice clean edges, I sand, sanded in the downward direction to get any of the excess paper off my cutout. Then by taking my little knife, and guys, this knife is a game changer. I absolutely love it. I've had it for so many years from when I used to scrapbook and I, and I love using it. It makes life so much easier. But I went ahead and I cut out the windows and then any excess paper that I couldn't get off by just sanding. I'll go ahead and drop the link below to this knife so you can grab yourself one too.
Now I wanted to give my house a more haunted and spooky look, so I took the same brush I used to, cut, to paint my signs, and I just dry brushed a little bit of that black paint all around the edges and then over the windows. Now this brush might have actually been a little too wide for me to use, so I used the very corner of it, but I really only paid attention to the sides, the edges of this haunted house, plus around the, the windows. Then I took this makeup sponge and I lightly brushed over the painted edges with that just to kind of rub it in and blend it in on the sides. Next I took those light up LED lights and these ones are ghost shape, although they do have a bunch of different varieties. And I got these from the Dollar Tree. I put some batteries in it and then I flipped my sign over and by using painter tape, I went ahead and taped the ghosts strategically into the windows. Now this you're just gonna have to play around with and see uh, what you like, but I will tell you that you need to start at the very top and work your way down to the bottom. And right where I have the battery box, that's the best place for it. To be honest, I tried a, different, a, a few different spots and that was the best place that I could find but you also want to make sure that the on and off switch is facing up and that the part where you would unscrew it is facing out so don't accidentally glue the part where you unscrew it to the back you need to make sure that's facing out then I went ahead and just like I said took my painters tape and I just taped all the wires down making sure that none of it showed um, all the edges or hung over and then just fixed my ghosts to look like they're kind of peeking through all of the windows. Then by using my hot glue, I went ahead and secured my battery box down to the back of the house. Then after my sign was completely dry, I took some Waverly chalk paint in the color Mineral and a chip brush. And this is the one that I always say it has wild and crazy bristles because it's very used. And I went ahead and dry brushed that mineral paint onto my sign. So you'll see that I'm not really pushing that hard. I'm just very, very lightly brushing over my sign just to give it kind of a little texture and dimension. Next, I took my sanding black and sanded the whole sign down to make sure that all the paint blended together. <laughs> then I grabbed that haunted word from that three pack of words from the Dollar Tree and gave it two coats of Waverly chalk paint in white. While I let that dry, I went ahead and grabbed my vinyl letters and I spelled out the words home, sweet, home. Then I decided that I needed my sign to be 3D. So I took some Jenga blocks and painted them black so they blended in. Now I do recommend painting eight Jenga blocks because as you'll see, I started with four and then decided that it needed to be raised even higher because of the battery pack in the back. Then after my Jenga pieces dried, I went ahead and hot glued one to the bottom, one to each side, and then one at the very top. And then this is where you're going to see that I added another block on top of each one of those and then painted those ones black. Then I went ahead and added some hot glue to each one of those Jenga blocks, flipped over my house, and glued it to the middle of my big sign.
Then I took my haunted word that it was now painted white and I hot glued that kind of at an angle in the middle of my house. <laughs> then to give my words a distressed look, I took that makeup sponge again and I took some black acrylic paint and very lightly brushed some of that over each letter. Then to protect my letters, I went ahead and took my Mod Podge again and Mod Podged over those just to make sure that they didn't come up. There you go, a really simple home sweet haunted home sign. What do you think? Now this next piece was actually inspired by something I saw at Bath & Body Works. For this next craft, you're going to want this bubble vase from the Dollar Tree. Now I did get the one with the scalloped edges because I thought that would look a little spooky. Then a little plate, a little glass ring holder or jewelry holder. Another pack of lights. These ones are spiders this time. <laughs> and then some spider rings. And these I just got in a pack from the Dollar Tree. Then you're gonna use some Mod Podge, black acrylic paint, it, some glitter, that's optional. And then just a candle. I really liked the green because I kind of thought it was Halloween-ish. So first what we're gonna do is I put some Mod Podge into my glass vase and I went ahead and painted it all in there. Now I didn't worry about the scalloped, the bottom part, because I'm going to do something different with that. Now I wanted to achieve a frosted look, so I actually did this twice. So I put the original Mod Podge in there, let it dry, and then did it again. Then I took that little plate and by using black acrylic paint, I gave that about three coats of that and then let it dry. <laughs> Next, I went ahead and took that black acrylic paint and painted the bottom of the vase where the scalloped edges were. Next, I grabbed my paint marker, and I believe I got this one at the Dollar Tree. I wanted to make a spider web design on the globe part of the vase. So I started with a dot right in the middle and then started drawing random lines going out in different directions. Then after I got all my lines drawn, I connected the lines by just kind of making that webbing going all the way around. And then I continued this all the way around the vase. Now this next part is optional if you want to use glitter or not, but to do this, I just went ahead and put some Mod Podge all over the black plate and then sprinkled some glitter all over it. Then I continued this onto the black part of the vase.
Then I took that little plate and I hot glued it to the top of the vase. Now I do suggest using E6000, but for the sake of this video, I just used some hot glue. Now I wanted to add some spiders to my spider web, so I took those spider rings and cut off the ring part and then just kind of glued them all over the globe in the front. Then I grabbed that green candle and I took some big spiders from the pack of spiders from the Dollar Tree and I glued two of those onto that candle. Then I put two AA batteries into that string of lights and stuffed them into the bottom of the globe. To finish this piece off, I decided that that green candle was just a little too green, so I took that brush with the black acrylic paint that I was using before and just lightly gave it a little coat. And that's it! Here is my spider globe candle. What do you think? For this last craft, you're going to need this box sign from the Dollar Tree, a pack of decorative picks that are pumpkins. Now these are the big ones, I also got the mini ones as well. A sprig of black glitter twigs, the small haunted houses, you'll need two of them, and then one cutout of the big haunted house, a piece of scrapbook paper, of course I got mine from Hobby Lobby, they're usually 25 cents each. Then you'll need this pack of words that we were using earlier and another pack of the lights. So first I took my pumpkin orange paint and gave the big haunted house a nice coat of that. After that was completely dry, I took a real wax candle and rubbed it really hard all over that haunted house. <laughs> then I gave this haunted house a nice coat of black acrylic paint over where I rubbed the candle. After the black paint was completely dry, I took some duct tape and I covered the haunted house completely with that. I made sure that the entire surface was covered and pushed it down really hard. Then I went ahead and peeled up the tape. This made it look like an awesome chipped wood look. Look how spooky that is. <laughs> now there are some areas that were a little darker than what I wanted, so I just took a small piece of duct tape and put it on there, pushed it on really tight, and then peeled it up, and that helped that. Next, I took one of the smaller haunted houses and my scrapbook paper and I traced it out on there and then cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> 
Then by using my Mod Podge, I went ahead and decoupaged that scrapbook paper onto the haunted house. Now you wanna make sure that you give it a nice thin coat and make sure that you pay attention to the sides and the corners because you don't want any of that scrapbook paper peeling back. So just make sure to cover the entire surface. Then lightly take your hand and push, push it all the way down. Then I took my sanding block and I sanded down the edges to make sure that it gave it a nice clean cut. Now for some of the indents, it was kind of hard to get my sanding block in there, so I just took a regular nail file and filed in between there, and it was a huge help. Now some of the paper that was hanging over was just a little too hard to get with my sanding block, so I took that knife again and I went ahead and cut off the excess. Then I took it and cut out the windows and the door. So I forgot that I wanted to paint the base of this before I put the paper on, so this is what I did here. Just by using some black acrylic paint, I went ahead and gave the base of this haunted house a coat of that. And to make it look more haunted, I went ahead and brushed the edges and around the windows and the door with the black acrylic paint as well. Then I repeated this entire process with that other haunted house sign. Next I took that wooden box sign that I got from the Dollar Tree and I gave that a couple coats of the black acrylic paint. Now I only painted the front and the sides and the top, but you're more than welcome to paint the back too. I just knew I was going to put this up against a wall so no one was going to see it. Once my box was all dry, I went ahead and took the three haunted houses and this is where I'm going to assemble the whole piece together. So I took one of the smaller haunted houses and I put hot glue just in the front section of the base and pushed it down on the back part of the, of the stand itself. So the back of the haunted houses are hanging off. Then by using some Jenga blocks, I went ahead and hot glued those to the bigger haunted house to give those some support. So I hot glued it to the very bottom and make sure to stand it up when you do this so that way you know that it's level and it's gonna be flush to the stand. Then after I got that all assembled, I went ahead and hot glued that to the front of the box. Then I took my lights, put some batteries in it, and using the painting tape again, I went ahead and enforced those lights just kind of in random spots in the whole haunted house. So you can see that I'm just kind of randomly taping parts down, but I did make sure that a little bulb was near one of the windows, so that way you can see the lights through. <laughs>
Then I grabbed a pack of this black cheesecloth, and I do realize that I forgot to show this at the beginning. I'm so very sorry. But I got this from Dollar General, but they do sell this at Dollar Tree. And I cut off a little section because I'm going to drape it over the entire bottom of the base. That way it kind of hides it a little bit. After my cheesecloth was all assembled, I went ahead and took the pumpkin picks and I pulled them off of the pick itself and then brushed on some black acrylic paint to make it a little bit more spooky and Halloween and then glued one of the bigger pumpkins to either side of the big house and then took a mini pumpkin and glued that to the side of one of the big pumpkins. <laughs> I hope that's not confusing, but you're gonna see in one second what I mean. Then I took that pick of branches and I cut off a little piece of that and hot glued it to the back of the side of the haunted house. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> then I did it on the other side as well. Next, I grabbed that pack of spiders that we used in the candle project, and I hot glued one of those to the very top to hide the hole. To complete my haunted house village, I took the word beware out of that pack of metal words from the Dollar Tree and my 3D pop-up stickers and I hot glued the stickers to the back of the beware. That way it stood a, up a little higher. It was 3D so it popped out a little bit. Then I decided it was a little too silver metal for me, so I took that same brush I had been using the entire time with the black acrylic paint, and I lightly brushed some of that all over the word. <laughs> then I went ahead and hot glued the whole thing down at an angle in the middle of that big haunted house. To give it a little more detail, I grabbed some of those spider rings again, cut off the ring part, and glued them to the bottom of the cheesecloth. So here you have it, a haunted Halloween village. What do you think?
my house is gonna look so spooktacular for Halloween this year. I am so excited to put these all over my home sweet haunted home. <laughs> I really don't think I can choose which one I love the most. I mean, they're all really cool in their own way and I love the fact that they light up too. You're gonna have to let me know in the comments which one is your favorite. And if you end up doing this, please don't forget to post pictures in my Crafts with Ash community group over on Facebook. I'd love to see your creations. I want to thank you so much for watching my craft tutorial today. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, then hop over on Facebook and give my Crafts with Ash page a like and a follow. Until next time, I'll craft with you soon. Bye!